Okay, losing die rolls like a champ in round two. Let's see if my opponent decides to uh, let me play first this time, though, also. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to assume my opponent doesn't. My opponent, yeah, is, is playing first. I'm on the draw. One more land gets me access to all my creatures. I do need a swamp for the spoils, but I have a pretty powerful hand. I'm going to go ahead and keep. I think it's pretty likely that being on the draw with my 18 land deck, I'll be able to rock out my third land by the time I need to be casting my, uh, my morphs. So I'm happy for that. And then a little bit of luck, we'll draw and do a swamp at some point. We got our third land, so super duper scary scenario has been avoided. The mana screw. Opponent playing a soul tide deck, I see. Benny mm, something. Ooh, right down. Hello. So this is actually pretty nice. We'll just uh, play out our morphs. We'll have Ride Down and Feeder Resistance to pound through some stuff. And then by the time we need to get to our late game, we'll have Raider Spoils and Flipped Ponyback Brigades. To remind you, I do have, what was it, nine swamps? Is that right? Yeah, I think I did nine. Because I have the uh, Ride of the Serpent. Ten would be better for a double lock, but still, we're, we're going on the greedy base here. Test card, ooh, that's a good card. So I'm not going to be the aggressor in this deck at all. Interesting that there's a planes here. I think we'll just show off our perfect mana just for the rubbins here. Next turn. Let's see. Depends what my opponent plays, of course, but I'm deciding between Raider Spoil or Ride Down. Could just play the Spoils just so that uh, I can offer a trade. It takes an entire turn, but if my opponent's not developing the board, that's actually okay. Instead, though, I'll just take the two. If it's a scary creature that I know I want to trade with, then maybe I'll just attack in showing my Ride Down, which my opponent, assumingly, if it's a good creature, won't want to just trade a more for. And then I can keep developing my board with the Ponyback Brigade. Highland Games. Hmm. Well, that puts a little blah on our game plan. Yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and play the Windscarred Crag out right now. I know I want to be the aggressor in this deck, but I don't want to trade a ride down for a Highland Games. I just want to waste it. Nor do I want to wait my, waste my feeder resistance. So for now, I mean, I don't mind taking two. Get that guy out. Cast this guy face down and then pass the turn. Probably just play the planes and start attacking in next turn. If my opponent wants to do the test guard captain attack again. No, it does not. I'm still happy to take two. Put it. Missed a land drop last turn? Must have. So my opponent was on the play. I missed that. But was able to find that swamp and continue developing the board. So this is Abzan splashing, splashing blue. That could be the case. Here's a morph. And an outlast. Ooh, that's kind of nice. What that means is I get to attack in with both my morphs and have open uh, my flip. And I'm definitely going to play the five mana to show that. Not too sure though. Let's let's just think to my next turn. What's the crackback? The attack's good for me, of course. I doubt my opponent will even block. And then what do I play? Probably a face down ponyback brigade and a feeder resistance. Thing is, I need to get this raider spoils online. I need to unmorph these uh. These other dudes. So yeah, maybe we'll just attack in with both. We'll unmorph our Ponyback Brigade on blocks. Trade a, a Goblin for a Highland game. Take five damage. And we'll be able to Raider Spoil. Draw a card. Do a bunch of damage. And, uh, and then be in a pretty good position next turn. That's currently the game plan. Let's see if it all goes to plan. When it goes for the block anyway, that's fine by me. Hmm. 
We trade off the Tutus. We get a bunch of goblins. <laughs> Wooly Loxanon. I wouldn't. Uh, I guess my opponent's feeling like so far behind on mana that that was the correct play. I mean, like, hey, let me just trade off the morphs because it's gonna be forever till the Loxagon gets flipped. But if that's the case, I mean, th should just kept the Highland game back and blocked with that guy. Sure, I'll take three. That's okay. Alabaster Karen, that's a good card. So we're going to play the Raider Spoil, attack with everything, and have our Feeder Resistance available for blocks, however that works out. I like that, putting the pressure back on my opponent. We don't get to draw any cards off of Raider Spoil, but that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 9 damage pounding through versus 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this Feeder Resistance is going to do a lot of work. Might even just do a ride down. Uh, I guess probably going to do a ride down if my opponent does a block. It's a little bit better, huh? Yeah, let's ride down. Do a bunch of damage. Kill my opponent's guy. This is actually a pretty relevant card now, being a 2-5 flyer that I can draw a life off of. Draw a life off? Draw a card off of. In the next turn I get to decide, do I want to uh, flip this guy and start doing those damages and gaining life? There's another morph. Golems can't really get through right now. I could just play a point and start going wide. Opponent wants to do that attack. Okay. So DC's pet's okay. I think I'll just go ahead and unmorph my Sage Eye Harrier, attack for two, draw a card, and then see what goes down. Time to just to win off this Sage Eye Harrier keep feeder resistance up at all time. Uh, we'd like to pay a life and draw a card. Ooh, chief of the scale. That's pretty nice. Get another butt on the ground. If the stage I hear goes away, do I still have a viable game plan? 2-3 doesn't do a whole lot against this board, but it has a nice set of block ability, but I think the feet matters a little bit more. But then what's my follow-up plan? Am I just going to always keep two mana up? One, two, three. Well, I will have five mana after that. So yeah, like next turn, yeah, I'm going to keep feet up because next turn I'll be able to like put Sidisa Pet face down and play Chief of the Scale. I'm just going to protect my Sage Eye Harrier at this point. These golems will just be used for uh, blocking. I, I mean, taking four a turn from this Tusk Guard Captain, possibly, uh, as in three plus the one life. But we're still winning that race, and my opponent has to be a little bit scared of attacking in when I have lethal on the crack back. This morph can be any number of crazy things. I think the most challenging would be an Abzan guide. My opponent can already gain two life here, going effectively up to ten. This becoming a four-four is a little scary. See how my opponent wants to attack here, though. No, just going on the defense. Well, that's fine for me. Bitter Revelation is very good, but I am at 11 life. I don't think I want to go super low, and I'm already getting some card draw off of my Sage Eye Harrier. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're just going to put the Sidisi's pet face down and a chief of the scale. Let's see how that works out. That allows me to keep feeder resistance up. Let's see what our next card is, though. I do want to make sure I put more blockers out since I'm going to be paying a life every turn. This is fine. I don't get to kill the Abomination, though. So do I even want to use my Feeder Resistance just to save a guy? It's not even saving a guy. My opponent just blocks, and that's fine. Actually, yeah, who cares? Haha, <laughs> silly me. All right. Don't get damage in, and I don't get to draw my card. And it is a little worrisome, because now my opponent will have uh, the ability to crack in for three and loot every turn. Do I want to use Bitter Revelation now? That seems bad. Because my opponent's attacking me for three, I still got to get in with my flyer. My opponent wants to be on the defense. So, we'll bust a move on our guys. Pass the turn. And if I don't need to use Feeder Resistance, I can just uh, undo my CDC pet, which I actually want, because it'll be a 2-4 lifelinker, which is nice. Grizzly, that's fine. Eventually, I need to worry about... Ooh, that's really good, too. So now we just got a full-on board stall, right? Which could end up working in my favor. I'm not too sure yet. I like being able to play Pony Pack Brigade and keep Feeder Resistance up. Of course, I don't have any attacks because this 2-6 just gets hosed at the moment. Do I want to fire off Bitter Revelation, though? I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's time to start going wide. I could fire this off in a little bit. Maybe if the board gets cleared. My opponent has no cards in hand. But let's get some major defense online. And now my opponent's in a pretty tough spot. Because we can use a feeder resistance to like pound through three damage. And then five only has to get through on the next turn. And then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's yeah, there's a bunch of bunch of dudes. And nice thing about feet right now is all my opponent's creatures are green. Assuming one doesn't come down that's not green. So I can put feet on any of my three drops and then uh just can't be blocked. Again, we guarantee that three damage. So here comes the abomination. Still happy to block. There's combat trick. Feet will take care of that nicely. Also means my opponent has no cards in hand, so that's nice as well. Not sure what that attack was for. Maybe my opponent forgot that I had flying also. Or uh, maybe it's just the last ditch, like, hey, I need to loot. Um, see if I can draw something. And yeah, maybe my opponent won't do it. So, cool. Let's go to the sideboard, please. I was like, there we go. All right. My opponent had serviceable cards, but all just sort of whatevs. I think I'm just going to run this back the way it is. I don't want to bring in that active trees like I did last time. I don't think a Defiant Strike really matters. Yeah, we'll just run it back. All right. This is a fairly weak hand, but I like that I have all my colors. It's a bummer that the Hate Blade doesn't come down on turn one, but my deck doesn't really need that. I'm keeping. Because uh, I'm not really doing a super aggressive trigger raid deck. And I have a, my like one premium removal spell, so therefore I, I like this. Not great. Put a Dinmal down one, so I'm going to be a little bit up on cards. If I don't draw lands, we're in good shape. Speaking of that devil. Here we go. Archer's Parapet. Hate Blade 
works with that. Ooh. Get in minorly punished. Drawing two lands, but that's the risk of keeping such a dork hand. All right, opponent has perfect abs and mana up. So not like last game where my opponent was screwed a little bit. Missed a land drop and then had some awkward land draws. Hello, Swarm of Blood Flies. That will work out nicely. Um, I'm not playing a card. I'll keep my Hate Blade up for blocks. I don't need to get that one point of damage in, so we'll just pass the turn. Don't want any suspension field on the Archer's Parapet. All right, we're just staring at each other. Ooh, Grizzly. All right, do you need to start drawing some more creatures? We'd love like a morph right now to be able to trade off the Grizzly. Ride down's okay too, but we're not in the aggressive, so that sucks. Question would be, do I want to trade the morph or the Grizzly with the Hate Blade? And unfortunately, it's going to have to be the Grizzly. Plus, if the morph is something scary, I have a suspension field to deal with it. So I would actually be happy if my hate blade traded with the grizzly right now. Would love it better if my swarm of blood flies was down earlier, but I just have to stay alive. All right, not fantastic, but such is the life. Trumpet blast. Well. If we ever enter get up to where I need to be, this that will be good. Here's now our last creature, which can just get debilitating injury away or any other fantastic removal spell. Plus, this morph can attack in freely. It's an Abzan guide? Yeah. Again, suspension field should help with that. We're going to have a little work to deal with this uh, guide coming through. Since uh, that's going to put my opponent up for life. Ooh, drawing more lands. Goodbye, you. Yeah, I want to use that ability. And we'll go to attacks. Opponent doesn't have blue mana. So we'll see what that's all about soon. Still no blue. Maybe have a blue card in hand. Nope. Dust card, Captain. That's a good card. Hey, that's also a good card. Definitely want to play it before combat. Get that guy run out. And now we're starting to get back in this game. Go ahead and uh, gain some more life. Not more life, but gain some life. Opponent's going to ping me away. As my opponent should. Don't think I'm blocking with the Abzan Battle Priest, so probably just start outlasting it. I don't think I want to waste the ride down on a parapet, which would be if I wanted to attack with the Battle Priest, what would end up happening? I'd rather keep it for against the Swarm of Bloodflies or just a more relevant creature. Yeah, making your dude big, go for it. Opponent missing blue. Maybe my opponent sighted it out, but I doubt it. Take up arms, that's great. One, two, three, four, five. I still have three mana available. Good. Very good. Ooh, what you got? Where is it? Ooh, a throttle. 
Unfortunately, I can't do anything about that. I can't kill a guy in response, and even then it would still die, so... Goodbye, my swarm of blood flies. You were so pretty. Um, my opponent has no cards in hand, and that means we're gonna end up doing some good stuff here in the near future. I'm gonna outlast... and pass the turn. My opponent's like, what? This take-up arms is gonna come down. Can't quite do a trauma blast after the take up arms, but still we'll be in, in some decent shape. This lifelinger is going to start getting us a bunch of. Turn point real scissor hand. You choose a creature or planeswalker card from it. That player discards. Uh, we get to see my hand, but. So you know I have ride down, trumpet blast, and take up arms. What I'm doing is in the chat to the right, uh, I'm writing down what my opponent has seen, so I know what my opponent has seen. So my opponent will be knowing to play around such cards. Assume my opponent attacks for three here. Opponent could just want to block. My opponent is out of gas completely and utterly. And actually because of that, I'm fine with just going boink. And then f 16 because I'm not doing anything else for the turn. I'm definitely not blocking. Mm, land's not what I wanted. I do think I win this race thanks to the Battle Priest. So I'm not going to block. I'll attack with everything. I assume this just goes here. But my opponent does know about my two cards. Curious if my opponent oh, just wants to take it. That's fine. Since my opponent's top decking, I'm not worried about taking this three, and I just gained that life back, so go for it. It is true that my cards do nothing except for on the attack, but that's why I'm going to keep attacking. My opponent does not know what my planes is, so we can keep that in hand, so I don't need the mana. I could have gone ahead and outlasted last turn to start getting this Battle Priest enough to get through the parapet, but I think with what's happening, I'm okay. And my deck should draw into stuff that make these warriors really good. And my opponent now is realizing the race is not being won. And we can continue just to attack with impunity here, thanks to our ride down and trouble blast. Can even do a ride down and then play Witness of the Ages, so I'm okay with that. My opponent, again, has no cards in hand. Black, white morphs, nothing that's super scary. This does mean warrior tokens could get eaten. But I'm going to force my opponent's hand. So I do a ride down and a trumpet blast here. Get a bunch of life, do a bunch of damage. This is a really scary spot for my opponent. Curious to see what my opponent does. As my opponent is out of gas, I'm willing to start making trades and uh, clearing the board because my opponent's top decking and, and I still have gas. Um. So if I trumpet blast, all that happens is the morph dies. That's not a big deal, because this isn't going to get big enough to kill the Tusk Guard Captain. I think I'm happy with Ride Down killing the Tusk Guard Captain, because that's definitely a threat. The morph can eat a warrior, and then my opponent can take four. Yeah, that's good. And we get our 4-4. Four, four. Ouch. It could have been correct to kill the morph. Because it potentially, you know, like a pine walker or big daddy morph. The uh, woolly locks it on. That, that certainly could be problematic. even like an Abzan guide. So as I think about it, I might have gone for the morph only because I knew the Tusk Guard Captain I could deal with because my opponent was too far behind for anything major to happen. Ooh, Siege Rhino, that's a fantastic card that I passed. But it goes back up to 11. Shouldn't change too much of the game right now, but I could be wrong. Sage Eye Harrier is nice. If I attack in with everything, Trumpet Blast just 
clears the board. Again, Warrior can go here or there, but... So if my opponent just wants to uh, block two Warriors and let 8, 9, 10, 12... My opponent can't do that. The Morph I assume doesn't do anything. The Siege Rhino could take out my Abzan Battle Priest, but that would include a bunch of damage and clearing the board, and then yeah, I just got to follow up. So we're just going to use the Trumpet Blast to uh, clear the way. Follow up. Again, it, this is because my opponent's top decking. So as long as I continue to press my advantage, I'm in really good shape. Siege Rhino goes in front of this guy. No. So do you have a morph that actually matters? Because I'm not going to throw my... I mean, eat the warrior. I'll eat your morph. I'm fine with that. What was it? Abomination. My opponent's just stuck without blue mana. So it's very okay with that. And I'm very okay with casting a flyer. I can block things for days. Alright. Opponent makes me lose a life, and I'm back at 20. Opponent hits the top deck. Probably an island. Just for the rubbins, which would totally... Oh no, it's a spell. So good. I'd be so pissed out of this case. And yielding Krumar, I'm okay with. Even though first strike is a little annoying. I've got big, beefy things. More lands. I think I just outlast here so that this guy can start being But if I attack, I don't attack with the flyer. If I attack with the witness of the ages, put no cards in hand. We can do the trumpet blast again. It does at least three. And there's no need to. Just outlast. Attack with my flyer. Start pinging away. I mean, a 5 4 is nice. Trades, kills, doesn't die to first strike. Opponent now finally, for the first time as a card, or first time in a long time, has a card in hand that can get a little scary. Let's take up arms, though, is going to seal the deal real fast. Talk with everything now. I like that game plan. Maybe not the warrior. There's really no point, right? Yeah, we'll save the warrior. Take up arms as the insurance plan. In case what my opponent drew was something just that blows out this trumpet blast. Play the Trumpet Blast in order to use it to um, kind of two for myself, but also get an entire turn or a number of turns um, off the clock for my opponent. Also gaining a bunch more life, sealing my opponent's fate, I presume. And then that's that. All right, there we go. And my opponent had likes to show me the extra lands. Definitely missing. I guess they didn't have that. My opponent was drawing them. But yeah, missing all that blue. Don't know how much the mana base is working against my opponent, but this match was decided on mana, as they tend to be sometimes. Hee <laughs> hee, contradiction. All right, anyway, next round. Let's go.